another episode of Inside the Gig, where we highlight one of the many talented artists playing in the town of Cave Creek, Arizona. This morning, it's Monday morning, and I feel like it's Monday morning. My guest is Ian Eric, who is playing at Ofrenda on Wednesday. Uh, I guess that's a Groundhog Day uh, from 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, Ian, how are you doing this morning? Excellent. Excellent. So I see you've got some guitars hanging on the wall behind you. Is that a... Uh, uh, McPherson hanging on the wall back there? No. <laughs> What's that black guitar you got hanging out there? It looks like a car. Uh, it's, a, it's actually, a, um, it's an ovation. Oh. We can do this. I'm around. I, I usually don't don't talk gear in these things, but oh, there you okay. go. Nice. These holes were actually done by Matt Weber, who used to be with uh, uh, Sleepy Dog Brewery. They were just playing holes, and I had them put some uh, brass in there because it looked nice and it's tarnished over time they were bright seven years ago <laughs> <laughs> so for i don't know that i've ever heard you play live um uh, but i've seen some of your videos for those of you that um for those that have not seen you play before kind of describe your style of performance i do a lot of live looping which uh involves um being able to record what i'm playing <clears throat> and having that repeat and maybe different parts and kind of a one man band type situation, but excuse me. <clears throat> it, is, it is Monday morning. I get it. It is Monday morning. Uh, but nothing I do is pre recorded and I don't use any drum machines. I do percussion on the guitar that gets recorded and sometimes vocally. Sometimes I even record um, uh, vocal parts and then harmonize over myself rather than use the harmonizer boxes that people use. The only, so the only digital trickery is the is the recording and the looping. All right. the sounds that are made are done 100% live. So what would you, um, so, so you talked a little bit about the technique of your play, uh, but if someone comes to hear one of your shows, what kind of, uh, what kind, kind of songs are they, are they going to hear? I'm hoping that they hear songs that they don't hear from a lot of other artists, but that you recognize as well, like very popular songs, but ones that for a solo might be tough to get away with without a little uh, um, backing part or percussion because it just wouldn't sound that good without multiple parts, but I'm able to create those parts uh, right then and there and play those songs. Okay, you you opened that door, so you got to give me an example. What's, what's one of those? Um, uh, I, a great example would, one one good example i think would be uh really popular would be everybody uh wants to rule the world from tears for fears yeah. uh i'm able to kind of create uh, a lot of the soundscape of that song quickly it, it, there's a lot of repetition in it and play it and people love to hear it because they don't hear that song from other people right there you go um I'm trying to think of another one. <laughs> it's funny. I actually get requests for this song from people who have seen me before. I play a, a live looped version of um, Waterfalls from TLC okay. uh, that that has some nice build to it. And, and you know, it's unexpected, but yet everybody knows that song. It's, it's not your typical uh, acoustic guy show with me. Yeah. It, it, it sounds fascinating. I, I look forward to seeing you. You'll be at a friend uh, on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, Groundhog Day from 5 to 8 p.m. It's indoors. Uh, it's a great Groundhog Day. Clearly, I'm going to be there over and over and over again. What <laughs> did this interview over and over? Again. Should I just play the same song over and over again? <laughs> well, let, let's, let's not go that far. But uh, <laughs> So, so how did you how did you get into this sort of stand up in front of a bunch of strangers to play guitar and sing thing? Oh, um, I've, I've played guitar since I was a teenager. And then at some point in my early 20s, I was in a bar and there was a guy playing there. And he, he honestly wasn't very good, unfortunately. And I, with a little bit of liquid courage, felt I could do better. And I had a friend who actually worked at that bar and the owner came over and said, you want to play here? And I said, yeah. And he said, all right, we'll do a Sunday, you know, I don't think there was any money. It was probably for beer. Um, and this was probably Friday night. And I said, yeah, okay, great. You know, and then left and went, I had to put together three hours worth of music in two days. 
but I did. I borrowed equipment to play the show. And well, then they fired that other guy and hired me. There you go. So it was a, a part-time and, and hobbyist and occasional thing. And this was, uh, this was uh, Long Island, New York, which is where I'm originally from, um, probably around 1995 or thereabouts, um, maybe 94. And yeah, I moved out here, same kind of thing. I moved here in 2004 to, to Arizona, East Valley, and, uh, you know, played occasionally. And then it was about... Um, well, someone you know, actually, and I'm gonna I'm gonna name names. Uh, kind of inspired me it was Aaron Howard. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. um, and it was probably getting close to ten years ago now that I met Aaron, and asked him, "What do you do for a living?" And he said, "I do music, this for a living, exactly what you see me doing." And I was stunned that anybody could do that. Um, and so that stuck in my head. And a couple of years later, I said, "You know what? I'm kind of done." with commercial construction. And I think maybe it's time to give this a go. And that was 2014. And it's been like up and better ever since. Best move I ever made. So, uh, so you, you said you said a lot of things in there, but I want to I want to dive in on a couple of things. One, sure. one is that so I, I had a I had a friend, I grew up in North Carolina, I had a friend who was a surgeon. And because he was a surgeon and used his hands, he never like mowed a yard or did anything that would possibly cause havoc to his hands but you just said you did commercial construction and you're a guitarist um yeah you must have some stories there um i think that it over time probably uh affected certain levels of flexibility um i still do work like that uh, my wife and i just renovated our house last year and did 90 percent of the work ourselves what am i going to do i'm not going <laughs> to <laughs> you know, no, I no, no nail hands gun. hammers. Yeah, I've beat no my nail gun head. accidents or uh, <laughs> uh, no. I almost put a drill. A I almost put a broken drill bit through my hand one time and got a little scar from that. But nothing, nothing permanent. So we're okay. <laughs> hey, I, I'm not. A, I'm not a full time musician, and I still won't slice my own bagels. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> some reason to... bagel slicing doesn't work for me. I don't know why. <laughs> Yet, uh, maybe it's time to insure these hands. Who knows. <laughs> okay, so you talked a little bit about your uh, music and and growing up. So you came out here to Arizona in uh, in '04. So you've been here uh, close to 20 years. Uh, yeah. I see you play almost every night of the week. Um, Quite a bit. I, how are how are these gigs different? So like, if they come see you at a friend of, what are they going to hear different from say if they saw you down in the East Valley? Other than uh, it, it all depends on the venue itself. I would say. Uh, I try to gear what I play towards the vibe of the, 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 the crowd and the place. Some places want a little bit more, you know, quieter. Um, I just played a gig this weekend that was a, a grand opening uh, celebration for uh, a new beer bar down here in Gilbert. And it was a loud, raunchy crowd. And we had a great time. I was able to be loud and, and super energetic. And I love that too. I love it all. It's a great way to make a living. So I'm fine with it. We don't let uh, walking into a friend of fool you. It, it looks like the best upscale restaurant you're going to walk into, but they like uh, upbeat, fun music. So don't, don't sag I into the, help. I'm a background music guy for this nice restaurant. <laughs> well, sometimes it even is, has to do, like even, even an upbeat song can be slightly laid back yeah. or super energetic it, it really and the volume volume level makes a difference on that too of course um yeah but i mean there's i won't uh i won't be holding back or just playing elevator music or anything <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> you, you ask about the background I, i'm sitting in front of a, a green screen which has a picture of the uh, tequila room at Ofrenda, which they say i think is the second largest tequila room in the world as far as number of varieties, uh, are you a tequila guy? Um, I'm not not a tequila guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say that I'm an aficionado of of any um, liquor or 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 beer or anything. I'm not a non drinker. I'm just not into it. Let's say, but I, I appreciate a good tequila for sure. Yeah. So. 
So I used to ask this of, of all the musicians I interviewed. Um, what What's your preferred beverage when you do these gigs? I'm so boring. Water. You water? You're a water drinker? Water. I'm an yeah. almost water drinker. I drink Budweiser. So <laughs> <laughs> occasionally, yeah. occasionally a beer, something light, uh, uh, most likely, but 99% of the time, just, just ice water. That's yeah. All. I, you know, the lubrication of the throat and the vocal cords is, is paramount. And I found, you know, in, in the early days, you know, mm -hmm. drinking, drinking a wine, people are like, here, let me get you a glass, glass of this nice wine. I'm like, it just dries you out. And, and, and whiskey does weird things to my voice. So it's like, um, you know, I actually have found that a, um, a liquor like a tequila or, or a whiskey on the rare occasions where I've taken some say before a show it actually does loosen my throat quite a bit no. um but it's still not a habit that i felt was necessary to get into so i i don't i don't really drink at gigs it's work well yeah. i've always heard that tequila makes your clothes fall off so uh <laughs> I just hope you don't have enough tequila <laughs> had a friend uh, <laughs> to have that problem it's not that kind yeah. of restaurant Eric. <laughs> it won't be <laughs> So I'm talking with Ian Eric, who's going to be at a Frenda on Groundhog Day from 5 to 8 uh, p.m. on a Wednesday of this week in a couple of days. I'm going to post this video on, um, on Monday today, um, which is the last day of January. Um, so anything else you want to tell your fans that are going to come to a Frenda on Wednesday? Oh, come on up to Cave Creek. It's a beautiful restaurant. Um, I was happy to visit it and see uh, Aaron Howard playing with Sarah Price a couple weeks ago. And um, yeah, food was delicious. Everything's great. It's going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to hearing you in Cape Creek. Thanks a lot, Ian. Thank you, Kevin.